Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Automotive Tester Certification. We are completely done with chapter 3 and also looked at the sample questions of chapter 3. Now it's time we should get into the chapter 4 which is all about automotive specific test techniques. Like what exactly are various ways we can conduct testing. So here we will be talking about how exactly static and dynamic testing is being conducted when it comes to automotive testing and automotive product testing. So as a part of this chapter, it is divided into two particular segments. Number one, uh, static test techniques. And number two is dynamic test techniques. And of course, uh, both of them will talk from the point of static techniques and uh, dynamic testing way. As a part of the first chapter, we have uh, the first uh, segment that is 4.1.1, the MISRA C2012 guidelines. Now, of course, C is a very important language here, so we will be talking about the same. But before that, a basic introduction to what is static test techniques. If you remember from your foundation, as a part of the chapter 3, we have discussed a lot about static test techniques or static testing all about. So static testing is something specific to measuring and reviewing the uh, completeness and sufficiency of work products which are being created. And of course, the static testing is all about non-executable approach of reviewing the work products. It could be anything. It could be about requirements, design, any work products which might be created as a part of high-level design or low-level design requirements. And in fact, if you talk about the control flow diagrams in terms of uh, call graphs or data flow diagrams, use cases, anything, which might be necessary for a test team to drive test cases and might be acting as a test basis for them. Thus, static testing plays a vital role. And of course, the importance and significance of static testing is all about finding defects early in the life cycle, which generally fulfills one of the principles of testing as well, that is early testing is beneficial and saves time and money. And of course, by conducting static testing, on the work products, it helps you to find anomalies, inconsistencies, contradictions, omissions, any such issues which could be being, being seeded there at that point of time and maybe found later in the dynamic life cycle, the cost of fixing such defects could be very expensive. So we prefer to conduct a round of uh, static testing at much earlier in the life cycle and find as many defects as possible, which would be definitely uh, uh, preventing defects being propagated to the code and definitely the production environment. And that's where static testing plays a vital, vital, vital role. And uh, not only that, static testing with that comes static analysis, which is generally for the code reviews, because not all the issues related to a coding defect can be found with the uh, normal static testing approach by just reviewing them. So you may have definitely a tool supported static analysis where static analysis is slightly different than static testing. Here it is completely specific to finding coding errors like uh, variables which are declared but never used or standards compliance or if you talk about unreachable code, the dead code or anything. You know, even if you talk about the coding standards can be very well met with help of these tools. So yes, we do have tool supported static analysis. Now let's get into the more important part of this segment is the MISRA C. The MISRA C is basically uh, another standard which generally deals with the C languages and we have certain guidelines. And for more details, I have put the link into the description. If you want to know more about the MISRA C standards, you can definitely look into more details on their official website. That is misra.org.uk. You can find the link in the description for your kind information. So what exactly it is and how exactly these guidelines help you assist uh, conduct certain uh, good review approaches and uh, find defects much earlier in the life cycle. So it is a part of the state of the art today that developers complies with coding guidelines when programming. The ISO 26262 standard also recommends that for safety relevant software. Coding state standards help to avoid anomalies in the software which can possibly lead to defects. At the same time, they support the developer in improving the maintainability and portability of the software. The MISRA C2 and T12 guidelines include guidelines for the programming language C, so it's completely specific to C language, and it defines two types of guidelines. Number one, rules are in general verifiable by static analysis tools, so whatever protocols or set of rules you define, 
using the language must be generally verifiable using the static analysis tool. For example, that the source code does not include nested comments. So it must be auditable or measurable using the test tools. If not, definitely uh, that's not compatible with the standard. And the second one is directives are not entirely verifiable by static analysis tool. The reason for that is that they rather refer to details of the development process or documents outside of the software. For example, if the developer has sufficiently documented the implemented behavior or not, because not every time your codes are actually covering the entire requirement in one particular part. So there are several parts in which you might be covering them and making sure that everything meets the expectations of the requirement. So each guideline here is categorized as one of the following three levels of obligations as per the MISRA C 2012 guidelines. Advisory, required, and mandatory. So advisory stands for guidelines which you should be following uh, or being a developer you should follow if the effort is appropriate or not. Required stands for guidelines uh, may only be neglected by the developer if can conclusively explain it. And mandatory guidelines must be followed by the developer. Exceptions are not allowed. So that means here we just have three different guidelines which are being determined as three different levels for obligations when working with the guidelines of the Mr. C. And advisory is just like recommendations required which are just basically like you can go ahead and should not be neglected. And mandatory is of course there is no option and choice for that. So organizations can individually intensify the requirement of a rule or directive but they can never lower it. So we just follow the uh, levels three levels here which will definitely be adding more value to the same uh, so yeah that's what we just wanted to convey you from the very first se section of the chapter four uh, that is 4.1.1 static testing and of course we will be getting into the details of it in the next tutorial so that's all from this particular tutorial in case you heard a lot of noise behind it's Diwali in India so maybe that's one thing which I just wanted to contribute over a festival as well as for the schedule you can still hear some of the noise. So yeah, we are busy celebrating Diwali here. So anyways, uh, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.